Helldivers 2 has taken the gaming scene by storm. With its unique gameplay, its replayability, and its democratically charged agenda to wipe out anything and everything less civilised than the might of Super Earth. Jokes aside, the game has seen unbelievable success in a very short time, which I don't think was expected by, well, anyone. That includes the developers, considering there were massive server issues at launch due to 500,000 people feeling the pull to democracy. We wanted to spend some time today to explain why Helldivers 2 may have changed the gaming industry forever. Let's start with the most important aspect of the game, that being the live service element. What's the first game that comes to your mind when you think of live service? Probably Fortnite. It seemed to have nailed what a live service game should be, so naturally, every game tried to copy it. And they were just as good, right? Every game seemed to have a battle pass that was rather lacklustre. Funnily enough, people don't want to pay £10 for three skins and 50 profile pictures. This is where Helldivers 2 breaks the mould. The main battle pass is completely free. While you have to purchase the smaller passes with an in-game currency, you don't actually have to spend anything. You can earn the so-called super credits simply by playing the game. And as a final bonus, the base game is only £35. You never feel that the game is trying to rob you. You get quality items that impact the way you might play the game, and you feel a real sense of progression as you fight your way through missions. But the best part of the game we control the narrative. Now I'm sure you are all aware of Joe by now, the infamous games master who supports the enemy faction and basically decides how hard it will be to complete liberation campaigns. But he only makes these decisions based on how well we play. If we lose a planet, those surrounding it will be attacked. If we liberate a planet, we cut off the advance of the enemies and push them back. Joe may select the planets we fight on, but our efforts drive the war to them. A great example of the community's influence on the game is with Space Vietnam, um, I mean, Malevolent Creek. The creek was no different to any other planet at launch. One of the enemy factions occupied the planet and we had to liberate it. But due to the unbelievable difficulty, the planet was turned into an absolute meme. Players all over the world shared hilarious clips of them being overrun and it spread like wildfire. Weeks later, when we finally liberated the planet, the devs honoured the fallen by giving every player a free in-game cosmetic. As a community, we were able to directly influence what the developers added to the game. Another brilliant example of how our efforts were needed were the mech suit stratagems. Now, the developers could have simply given us these in an update, but no, no, we had to earn them. This game rewards you for playing. It gives you new abilities, but it makes you work for them. So the sense of accomplishment that you feel when you drop in that mech suit for the first time is so much better. Now, for the gameplay, to which Helldivers 2 basically nails exactly what it wants to do. The gunplay feels amazing, every weapon feels unique in its own way and you really get a sense for which guns you want to use against certain enemies. No weapon feels like it is difficult to control or that it doesn't pack a serious punch. If you can melt a robot twice the size of you, then your gun is clearly powerful enough. And yes, there are some balancing issues that are getting sorted out all the time by the devs, but most of the weapons act exactly how you'd expect them to. The gunplay also hugely benefits from the superior sound design. Every weapon sounds incredible and you feel the impact of everything on the battlefield, simply because you can hear it. Where this excels the most are the stratagems. Now by this point everyone knows what stratagems are, but these powerful abilities allow you to even the odds against the hordes of enemies. Charges are giving you issues? Drop in a rocket launcher and blow its head off. A tank got you pinned down? Use your orbital laser and burn it to ash. Possibly the most satisfying part of the stratagem is looking up and seeing these attacks come directly from your super destroyer. The only catch with the stratagems? You can only bring four into a mission. The best way to play Helldivers 2 is to use different loadouts. Don't fall into the trap of using the meta. Try different things, experience the game in different ways, have fun, and I guarantee you will love this game even more. You can even go further with your loadout by switching out your armour to gain different buffs and use boosters to enhance your abilities. The game doesn't even have a difficulty slider. Okay, well it does, but not in a traditional sense. As the difficulty gets higher, the enemies don't get harder. The same enemies will deal the same damage on every difficulty. You'll die in two shots of a certain enemy on the easiest difficulty and die in two shots on the hardest difficulty. What does happen is the amount of enemy increases, the intensity of each encounter increases. You'll see tougher enemies spawn more often, like with bots, you'll see more tanks, you'll see more hulks. With the bugs, you'll see more bile titans and chargers. The planet that you're on also might have certain modifiers, like only allowing you to bring three stratagems, or you get sandstorms and blizzards that completely blind you. 
you've got extra objectives. Most recently, they've added things like dropship factories, where you're literally getting pinned down from the air. They added in the flying bugs not long ago, which players were really surprised to see because it wasn't announced, it just happened. And the absolute most annoying one is the stratagem jammer. There is nothing worse than when you're getting pinned down by tanks and hulks and all of these bots and all of a sudden you realise you can't use any of your stratagems. That means no resupplies, no reinforces and no absolutely ridiculous 500 kilogram bombs to blow the whole base to smithereens. The game randomises every map so you never know what you're going to get. I remember on one map I had two stalker layers. Now, for those who have played it against the bugs, you know how annoying those stalkers are, but to have them going from two different locations was an absolute pain. But you've got to track them down, you've got to deal with it. You've just got to simply work as a team to find success. Now, before I get to the final word, I do want to address the toxic community that naturally grows with every game release. Some players want to use the same weapons, armour, stratagems and playstyle in every single mission. That's fine, just don't force others to do the same. I've seen countless people getting kicked just because they're using different stratagems. People using a cosmetic in the game that the developers added as a joke. And they're getting kicked out of games for it. Just because the people who are hosting these games aren't happy that they wanted to fight the bots on Space Vietnam. What's hilarious is the devs actually start to wind them up. When players complain about the difficulty, the general reply is, get good. They don't pander to the players who want the game to be easier, simply because they refuse to play it in a different way. This is perfect because you build a game that challenges you and makes you change. The things you use to fight the bugs, they shouldn't work the same way against the bot. That's the point, you need to use different things and learn what is really fun to use to destroy each enemy type. But like I said earlier, that's the best part. Try different stuff, bring some different weapons in and you might have a lot more fun that way. Obviously on the harder difficulties, you might want to use the things that you know is going to get the job done. But if you go on a little bit of an easier difficulty, try different things out. Continue about the bugs and bots though. If a major order says to fight the bots and people are choosing to fight the bugs, let them. It's a game. Let people enjoy it. And as a final point, the devs are geniuses for not bringing in PvP. We're all on the same team, so just chill. And we might get a little bit of hate if any of those toxic games are seeing this right now, but hopefully you're hearing this and thinking, oh, yeah, maybe I do need to change a little bit. To close up, the game is fantastic. It's simple, but its ever-evolving gameplay loop keeps players hooked as they never know what an encounter will be like. If you haven't played the game yet, I strongly urge you to. And if you don't have a PC or a PS5, we cross our fingers that the game will be brought to Xbox because honestly, this is the type of game that everyone should experience at least once. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel and see you in the next one.